does Aquaman swim at supersonic speed? In 1998, French long-distance swimmer Ben Lecombe became the first person to swim across the Atlantic Ocean, freestyling across 3,700 miles, and with a support boat, it took him 73 days to complete his trip. Upon reaching the other shore, his first words were, never again. And this is just about as good as a humanoid like you or me could hope to do while swimming. But if you were Aquaman, Ben's entire trip would take you just 30 minutes. How does Aquaman swim so fast? Arthur Curry, or Aquaman, is probably most famous for being the superhero that talks to fish, but his swimming, depicted in comics and films, should be right up there with his most impressive powers. Traveling through the water as fast as he does, I will argue, is even more astounding than flying really fast like Superman because of the unique challenges underwater motion presents. So how does Aquaman move so quickly through the water? How much power does it take to push through the waves? Let's grab our five-point pentadents and figure it out. First, how quickly does Aquaman travel underwater? Canonically, as stated in JLA Volume 5, Justice for All, Arthur Curry can move at up to 3,000 meters or three kilometers underwater every second. That's 6,800 miles per hour and a ridiculous velocity. It is two times the speed of sound in water. If Aquaman were to pass by us in this video right now at that velocity, this does not even have enough frames to capture that motion. There's a good reason why nothing underwater travels at nearly two miles per second. And that reason makes Aquaman even more powerful. I said pentadent. <laughs> Tried it. <laughs> And that reason is drag. Anytime you move through a fluid like water or air, you experience a drag force, a force opposite your direction through that fluid. You create drag every day, even though you don't really see it or feel it. So I've visualized it here. As you move through something like air, the air is pushing back on you as you try to push it out of the way with your body. So that's one kind of drag. Another kind is the friction from the air just passing over your skin. And there's also drag from the low pressure areas created by your shape. The faster that you move through a fluid, the more of that fluid that you have to push out of the way more quickly. And so you can see in the general drag equation that the force of drag is proportional to velocity, but not just velocity, velocity squared. That means, for example, if you were to double your velocity through a fluid, the force of drag on you would not double, it would quadruple. The force of drag, you can see, is also proportional to the density of the fluid you are moving through. Now, water is a thousand times more dense than air, and Aquaman is swimming through water at a ridiculously high velocity. So if he is moving through the water at that speed, he has to overcome an enormous drag force, and if he is doing that, that he is incredibly powerful. Accidentally, yeah! Power can be defined as energy over time, and energy can be defined as a force acting across a distance. If we combine these two facts, we can multiply the force of drag by velocity again to get our power value to overcome drag and swim at top speed. Now we have a new equation where the power to overcome drag is proportional to velocity cubed. And this is gonna give us an Atlantis-sized power value. So plugging into our equation the density of seawater, the stated velocity of Aquaman, the coefficient of drag for a human body gliding headfirst through water just like Aquaman does in the movies, I cannot believe I found a real scientific paper for that real value. And estimating the cross-sectional area of Jason Momoa, we get a power value just to overcome drag for Aquaman to swim at top speed of one terawatt nearly one trillion watts of power. I love comic book logic because this is a fantastically absurd value. Needs more points. To swim like Aquaman, your body would need a power output equivalent to one-sixth what the entire planet produces in electricity. Where could all that power come from? Oop. Ambassador Squid, what is up, Sephirobrod? <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, they're right here. No, they don't look like that. Close, though. 
<laughs> oh. Power is energy over time. So maybe all of Aquaman's energy for his huge power requirement is coming from the food energy that he eats, the calories. Let's use Olympic mega champion Michael Phelps as a swimming energy comparison. Phelps famously ate 12,000 calories per day to sustain his swimming and training. Now that is a lot, but for Aquaman, it's not even close to enough. Septident me! Aquaman's one terawatt power requirement would burn through over a billion Michael Phelps meals in a single second. So I don't think Aquaman is getting all of his food energy from just eating a lot of spaghetti. So let's see if we can turn to the seven C's for a better food energy comparison. Ooh, oh, it's so cold. <laughs> the biggest eaters in the animal kingdom are undoubtedly the blue whales. Could, could you like move way in the background? Thanks, Kevin. It's a useful power. In 2010, a study published in the Journal of Experimental Biology calculated that blue whales can take in almost half a million calories of small fish, krill, and the occasional bird in a single mouthful. This is by far the most amount of food eaten at once by anything on the planet, but it is still not even close to satisfying the intense power requirements of Aquaman. Just to maintain his speed, Aquaman would have to eat, process, and then perfectly transform into power a blue whale's worth of food every two milliseconds. So clearly, traditional food energy comparisons are not gonna work here because Aquaman would need to eat four times the amount of food you eat in your entire life every second just to overcome drag in water. Wait, wait, how do you get the constant beach look for the, how, wait. Yeah, whatever. I think I've come up with a food energy comparison that's a bit more comprehensible. Biologists have estimated that there might be a trillion kilograms worth of fish biomass in all the world's oceans. Now, if we just speculate and say that all those fish on average have the caloric content of a very calorie-packed fish like the skipjack tuna, then just to maintain his speed, if Aquaman got all of his energy from food, just like we do, to fight drag, he would deplete the world's oceans completely in under a hundred days. And remember, this is just Aquaman, one Atlantean. There's an entire civilization of Atlanteans. If they were doing this and they got their energy from food, then they would do more to deplete the world's oceans in a year than humans have done since human civilization was even a thing. Our numbers are so large that Aquaman simply cannot be getting all of his energy and therefore power from food alone. It pains me to say it, but maybe some of that power is coming from the magic that protects his home and courses through his trident or some unexplained Atlantean genetics. We can still, though, explain how Aquaman physically swims. Octodent, yeah. When Aquaman swims, it doesn't look like he's kicking his legs or even really doing anything. He's kind of like the Superman of water. He just goes. That suggests some kind of propulsion system, but water isn't shooting out of his wherever. So what if Aquaman could be controlling magnetic fields like Magneto? Seawater is a conductor, which means it responds to both electric and magnetic fields. If Aquaman then could control magnetic fields, he could induce seawater to flow past him and create a kind of propulsion that we call magnetohydrodynamic drive. Magnetohydrodynamic drive isn't just an awesome word to say, it's a real concept, and we've even built working prototype drives. However, this kind of propulsion comes along with its own problems. For one, a substantial electrical power requirement, which doesn't really get around the fact that we already have a substantial power requirement. So instead of focusing on this, maybe we should look into how Atlanteans could swim most efficiently through the water to reduce any potential power Power requirement, and I think this is where pop culture gets it exactly all right. 
Looking at footage from the Aquaman film, it looks like whenever he is speeding along, he is trailed by and almost engulfed in a substantial stream of bubbles. And the cool thing is, this would make perfect sense. If water goes fast enough, its pressure can go so low that it turns from water to water vapor. This is called cavitation. And you've probably seen cavitation before if you've ever seen a boat propeller go really quickly underwater and form a lot of bubbles. Cavitation can create bubbles where you don't want them in boat propellers and pumps and wreak a lot of havoc, but you can also use cavitation to your advantage. If you make an object go fast enough through water and provide your own bubbles, you can cause super cavitation. And this is where the envelope of air encompasses the entire object. Now think back to what we said about drag. If Aquaman was a super cavitating object like this, then he wouldn't be directly fighting the drag forces of water, but water vapor. This would lower the drag forces on him and reduce the power requirement so much that this is how we made the fastest underwater objects on the planet. Seven, eight, nine, not a dent. Yep. In 1997, the US Navy demonstrated the first fully submerged test of super cavitating projectiles. They were very streamlined objects that had a nose cone that supplied their own gases to create the envelope of air around them and super cavitate. These were most likely the first objects on Earth ever to break the sound barrier in water, though we cannot be sure of that because military. The greatest velocity achieved by these projectiles was over 1,500 meters per second. Look at that. That is over 50% of Aquaman's stated underwater velocity. Super cavitation can be so effective in lowering the drag forces on underwater objects that if this is what Aquaman was doing, super cavitating through the water by providing his own bubble stream, maybe from that swim bladder we gave him in a previous episode of this show, then with the help of a little magic or maybe some hyper advanced biology that we haven't seen yet on Earth, he could start a pro Approaching his ludicrous stated speed. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, oh, sorry. No, oh, Claire, the undersea mare. What is up, girl? So how does Aquaman swim so fast? Well, mainly because of the large drag forces underwater. No matter how he is swimming physically, he has to be getting up to top speed by harnessing an absolutely enormous power output that the world's oceans literally could not sustain if he was getting all of his energy and power from food like we do. He could lower this power requirement and make his many kilometers per second velocity underwater a lot more believable though if he did exist exactly what it looks like he's doing, being a super cavitating object. I guess that's not out of the question when you have complete mastery of the sea. Like wielding a decadent wood because science! Woo! 10 points, baby! Some of you might point out that Aquaman is probably more like a super cavitating torpedo, which do exist, but again, we can't be sure on the state of super cavitating torpedo research because military. But yes, Aquaman would be more like that, at least the size of a torpedo, though those things go way slower. Instead of thousands of meters per second, only a few hundred, and I think they only get up to uh, around 200 or so miles per hour, 200 knots. That is not very fast compared to Aquaman, but it would be fast enough to change naval warfare because ships would not be able to get even close to getting out of the way of these things. So yes, super cavitating aqua, aquapedo. Thank you so much for watching, Douglas. If you want more of me, you can go to alpha at projectalpha.com. Do that, you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else, and you can get other premium content from myself, Nerdist, and Geek and Sundry. Follow me and Because Science here on social media and suggest ideas for future episodes. Mm, goodbye.